It is your favorite startled zombie here with another dark tale. This one comes from a good friend of mine, Lord Dog God, Hollow be his name. Hallowed? Hallowed? Is it hallowed? I feel like it's hallowed. Hallowed be his name. Sent us one. Now, don't forget that you can also uh, donate if you want to help the channel out, help me out specifically. I am still incredibly unemployed. Still laid off. Still waiting for work to pick back up. Yeah, so I would appreciate any donations you can spare. If you can't, it's it's fine. It really is. I promise and I very highly appreciate you just watching or listening to my content. That in and of itself means a lot to me. When I was about 14 years old, I was obsessed with outdoorsy shit, like being in Cub Scouts or like I was at the time in Boy Scouts. I wanted to be an Eagle Scout so badly that I did memorize every knot in the book. One week, a bunch of us go camping into the woods in some bumfuck area in Indiana, as Boy Scouts tend to do. It's uh, it's about 12 of us, not including a uh, the scout leader who is one of the kids' father or something like that. So we set up our tents about a mile into the woods and pretty well just fucked around for the first day. Two of the kids and myself went out on a quote-unquote secret mission to see if we could find the river. We'll just call these two Steve and Logan to protect their identity. So we're just walking along the path and Logan decides he wants to race us. So of course he takes off and we chase after him. A little ways along the path he looks right and comes to a complete stop. Just staring at something in the trees. We get up to him and look. And there's a fucking deer It's just smashed against a boulder. This thing looks like it got hit by a semi and... So we obviously go up and look at it, but turn away due to the smell. At about this time, it's starting to get kind of dark. And we're a little creeped out. We're not really supposed to leave the group as is. So we hauled ass back to the campsite and told the other kids about the deer we saw. The next morning was canoe day. We all walked down the same path the three of us went down yesterday. And I look over to try to see the deer as soon as we reach that part of the trail. But it's just, it's gone. Like not the deer, but the, the boulder. It's just gone, like it was the size of a minivan, and it's just, it's not there anymore. So I'm obviously silently freaking the fuck out, but I keep walking, don't say anything. And we finally make our way down to the building with all the water gear in it. A scout leader counts how many of us there are in order to get the right number of canoes. He gets out five three-seater canoes. Let's say that one more time. Five three-seater canoes. We all get in, and one of the kids rides with him to break the odd number of scouts up. We make our way back to dry land when we're done, and just walk back to the campsite talking about what we've just finished doing. Logan and Steve and I were in the first boats to leave, so we start asking everyone who they were with. Most of the kids are able to say who they canoed with, and of course the scout leader's son went with him. But Trent and Bill can't seem to figure out who was with them in their boat. They swear up and down there was a third person in there, so I do a quick head count, and that's when I notice something out of place. There's 12 kids, and one scout leader. He got out five three-seater boats, and we had one too many kids, so one had to ride with him. That means that there was an extra scout. Someone else was in the canoe with Trent and Bill. So later, we get back to camp, and nobody believes either of them. It just doesn't make any sense. They refuse to. So I speak up, backing them and explaining the math problem. Everyone gets quiet all of a sudden. The scout leader kind of asserts his dominance then. Alright, tonight we all sleep in the mess hall. We gather all of our shit together and bring it inside the dining area. Some of us are so freaked out they just sleep underneath the tables, as if that's going to help. Most don't sleep at all. I stayed up all night looking out the window, just watching and waiting for someone to try and sneak up on us. Eventually I just passed out from pure exhaustion and then get like 20 minutes of sleep before it's time to get up. The scout leader tells us what happened yesterday was one of the boats must have been a two-seater on accident and we were just confused and not to worry about it and that we'll all be fine. But of course, nobody believes him, though we pretend like we do just to keep from shitting ourselves. 
that night we make a fire and start telling scary stories and we essentially just spend all night out by it close together having a good time and I think in some ways that fire made us feel safe and protected which is fucking dumb in retrospect and completely unfounded late in the evening I realized I drank way too much fucking lemonade and had to pee so I got the keys to the mess hall from the scoutmaster and I go inside to relieve myself Logan and two other kids have come inside after me and grab some bread to make toast with. I leave the bathroom, go back to the fire after locking the building up, and immediately begin consuming burnt toast. We're moving through bread fairly quickly, so I turn to Logan and ask, Did you guys all grab a loaf? He said yeah and reaches for the third one, and it's it's just not there. He starts flipping shit looking for it, ask who the fuck took the last loaf of bread. Of course nobody has it so I ask him who all went with you and he responds with it was George and George who is with us George gets really fucking quiet and suddenly a wave of fear washes over his face and he starts panicking somebody snuck in and stole a bread loaf right along with them someone who is dressed as a scout that was the final straw for the scout leader and he decided to cut the trip short. So he said the next morning we would all just make way to the van and leave. A few of the kids run independent head counts just to ensure it's 12 of us. Everyone's here. No more, no less, no strangers, no extras. We all pile into the van and get the fuck out of Dodge that morning. Finally get home and told mom we cut it short because there was a bear or something that stole food from a tent and I guess she bought it. About two hours pass, and then Mom comes into my room and asks me. Steve's parents want to know if he went straight home or if he went anywhere else after getting out of the van. So I I thought about it, and I, I didn't see Steve get out of the van, or come to think of it, I don't, I don't remember sitting next to him or if he even got in the van at all. But there were 12 of us. There were 12 of us. See, I counted. He had to be there. So I obviously start shitting myself and mom calls the scout leader and tells him what we think happened. He drives back to camp and we find Steve barricaded in the mess hall. He took off for one final piss break and we left without him. That means there was someone in the van with us. Some other kid that nobody noticed and like three people did head counts. So I talked to Steve a few days later and he said he heard growling outside the doors like there was a pack of dogs trying to speak English I told him he sounds crazy and that I didn't believe him but I did nobody noticed the stranger they're in the city now and no one knows Well, I hope I did that justice. This is the third time I've tried recording this now. So, uh, thank you all oh so very much for listening. And this is your favorite Startled Zombie signing off for the evening. Good night, sweet dreams, pleasant nightmares, and I will see you all at the next reading.